Hey, y'all, I'm Shane Sams, the host of the Membership Masters podcast. I'm a self-employed, location-independent online entrepreneur, and I make my entire living online with membership websites. And I interview some of the best membership owners, some of the best entrepreneurs and marketers from all over the world right here on the Membership Masters podcast so that you can learn the tips, strategies, and tactics that you need to build a successful membership business as well. I'm really excited for my guest today. His name is Cole Humphus. And sit back, hold your hat here, people. He sold his membership site. He built a membership site that was making $400,000 a month. And this was a $49 a month membership when people enjoyed it. Built it to thousands of people, got it to $400,000 a month. And he had an eight figure exit from his membership website. That's, that's 10 million plus, y'all. That's a lot of money to be able to sell a membership site for. And he built it in just a few years. I was introduced to Cole by a good friend of mine named Kirk Duplessis. I want to give Kirk a real quick shout out here on the podcast. Kirk has been on the Membership Masters podcast too. And a couple of weeks ago, he sent me an email and said, man, you got to interview this guy. You got to meet Cole. He's awesome. And he's got a great story about what's actually really possible when you build out an amazing membership. Now, this happens a lot here on the Membership Masters podcast, guys, but I get talking to people and we're just hanging out and I'm just recording and we're not, we forget we're on a podcast and we just, a mastermind breaks out, man. We just start talking about strategies and tactics and how we're going to grow our memberships. And that's what happened on Cole's interview today. We're going to get to the story later in the podcast about how Cole launched his membership, built his membership, got it to six figures, got it to seven figures and grew it into this behemoth of a thing that he was able to sell. But we're also going to talk about strategies about improving your sales funnels? How can you get more people in your membership? How can you stop relying on organic posts and organic social media? How can you go out and acquire customers by buying ads? We're going to fix your funnels and fix your order forms to where more people are going to take your offer. Cole shared a crazy, amazing strategy that I'm actually going to go do right now. I'm going to go change an order form right now so I can actually do this. It's called the one penny order bump. We're going to talk about building a small and mighty team that can take action fast and do what it takes to grow your membership site. And we've even got a little wisdom. We got some life lessons on the podcast today of what it's like and what you learn about yourself after you get to seven figures, after you sell your business. You know, Joss and I, we sold our business a couple of years ago and it changed everything. And some of it was good. Most of it was good, but some of it was actually kind of bad. Kind of like, wow, did that really happen? And Cole experienced the exact same thing after he sold his company. So we're going to talk about what that looks like to start your business, to build your business, to grow your business, to scale your business, to sell your business, and then what happens after the exit. Man, this was a fun conversation of strategy, tactics, and everything in between, and I cannot wait to share it with you today. But before we get started, I got one question. Are you ready to become a membership master today? All right, let's go. Welcome to the Membership Masters Podcast, brought to you by MembershipMasters.com. This is the podcast where we teach you how to get and keep more members every single month. I've helped thousands of people start, build, and grow memberships, and I interview some of the biggest membership owners anywhere online. My goal is to help you build a million-dollar membership of your own. Brick by brick, let's do it together. Come on. Three, two, one. Cole Humphus. What's going on, man? Doing well. How about you, Shane? It is good to finally connect with you. We've got some, we've got a lot of mutual friends and uh, had, a, had a great friend of ours named Kirk uh, Duplessis, who's been a guest on this show, connect this, and uh, told me a little bit about your story. And I'm pumped uh, to go down that rabbit hole. But we've been talking about uh, click funnels here and how, yeah. and Russell Brunson. <laughs> so, uh, did you get onto click funnels when they first launched and start using it then, or did you Pretty find much. it later? Yeah, no, I, I actually remember it was actually sort of the, the, I know we were just talking about funnel hacking life, but the summit, not the summit, the event, the marketing event that sort of changed my life was traffic and conversion in San Diego in 2015. And that was essentially where I think click funnels actually launched at that event. And, uh, I signed up then. And the real motivation was I needed something to do one click upsells very easily. Oh, dude, that's ex man. I, Cause we, we used to be on Infusionsoft. Oh, and, yeah. and we had, and we had all kinds of trouble getting stuff like that to work easily. But then like, I've, I've been a Russell fan forever. We actually went to Boise to ClickFunnels headquarters and did one of the big 
like four day funnel hacking live, the small group sure. things. Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. It was just a blast. Cause I just respect his marketing and stuff so much. And I remember thinking when I saw click photos for the first time, they can just press a button on the next page and give me more money. That's I incredible. Know. Right. And yeah, it, cha well, it, it changes your business when you can do that. I was just going to say like, depending on the business model, you know, like if you're selling high ticket, it may not matter, but for many others of us who have a story or, or are currently in the low ticket thing, it's uh, I think it could be, it is for many of us, the difference of being able to play or not get yes. off of that starting line, you know, like in one thing, not to go into too much of a rabbit hole, but this is good stuff. Like one thing that I think is important for people to remember is if they've only been selling so far from their own pure hustle and, and, and by hustle, I mean like organic, right? Like one year, two year, three year, five years, whatever, building a following, there's no appreciation of the mechanics of why average order value or lifetime value and why the heck that's so important. Yeah. But if sure. you start running ads, that's when you're like, oh, dang, like I'm losing money. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe <laughs> Wait, you'll quit oh, using let's say it cost yeah. me $200 to get a $30 member. This isn't, yeah. this is not working out, dude. I'll tell you one click up sales we were doing uh, for courses like I, or content or people, you can do one click up itself for anything. Someone joins yeah. your membership. They take a coaching call. You could totally do that. Right. Yeah. So I was at funnel hacking live, believe it or not. Uh, and I, I don't, I don't remember when it was, I can't remember. I think it was 2019. I don't remember the, uh, the, the pandemic has messed up my time scale, the, <laughs> yeah, like I the know. calendar and everything. I don't know what year I anything can't is. Believe it's already almost March. I know it feels, I feel like 2020 was 17 years. So now everything yeah. is distorted. So yeah. I was at one of the speakers was named Jermaine Griggs. You ever heard yeah. about Jermaine? Griggs I know the before? name. Haven't met him. Yeah. He does like a, he does like gospel piano teaching lessons and he does it through a really? membership and he's like oh. two, three million a year. Just killing. Yeah. Him. Yeah. yeah, Cool. And uh, so he was a speaker. He comes on stage. He does thing. I, I talked to him later and I'm hanging out and asking him some questions. He blew my mind. He said, man, you know what the best one click up sale in the world is? And I said, what is it? And he said a quarterly membership. And I said a quarterly membership. And he, so he talked and what he did was doing was he would say like, let's say your membership's a hundred bucks a month. Right. Right. So that's 300 bucks a quarter. He's mm -hmm. like on the, the next page when someone joins their monthly or a free trial or anything, ask them to join quarterly uh, for a commitment. Like I'll give you a quarterly membership for the discount, but on this page only one click up sell right now. Mm -hmm. And I, and he was like 30, 40% of people take that in our funnel. I'm like, get out of here. That's not true. And but the, the magic of it was, is he, one, he was creating a ton of opportunity down the road. Like he was basically guaranteeing those people who ever took it would beat LTV because quarterly stay longer, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then he was using that money to fuel the ad spend. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 And then he's got bam, bam. So he's just churning all these monthly members through. And then we did that when we, when I first talked to him and I came back, I started doing it with free trials and it just blew my mind. I was like, this is like, no one's going to sign up for a free trial. And then automatically sign up for a freaking three hundred dollar quarterly plan, and you know, they yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, I, man. You know what my secret hack for membership acquisition is? Is speaking of upsells, a one penny order bump. Oh, hold on. What one <laughs> penny order bump? Huh, say, uh, wait, what, are you, uh, what are you doing here? <laughs> like, are we already? Do you already want to go down this rabbit hole? Because this, this, this podcast always ends up backwards. <laughs> like, we, we, it's just too because because everybody I talk to is just it's like so into this stuff. We're just hanging out, and then we're like, oh yeah. By the way, tell me your story. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Whole, yeah no, let's go down can, the rabbit that, hole. That can come later. People have short attention spans anyway. So, the one penny order bump, which by the way, I think you can no longer do a penny now. They make it a dollar, but um, still I'll, low we'll, low amount is what we'll go with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you'll see the context here. Okay. So we would sell a, you know, and for context, Cole's classroom, the company that I grew before I sold, uh, almost two years ago. Now we grew it from bootstrapped it all the way up to 10,000 members at $49 a month. Um, it was a pretty successful operation Yeah, and, that's intense, man. That's and, and it is intense and it comes down to acquisition and LTV and all those things we just talked about. And yes, click funnels helped me do all that stuff. Um, that being said, the order bump as a trial outperformed having a separate one-time offer page to go take a $1 trial or any, doesn't hmm. matter the increment. So what we used to do is we'd sell a one-time product. Let's say, you know, any, we test everything from $2 all the way to $19. You know, you get the idea. It doesn't matter. We'd have ads going to that specific pain point, that specific product. And then at first we'd be like, all right, let's go ahead and offer the trial as a separate upsell page, you know, and, and we had all this 
awesome like design work. And by awesome, I mean, relatively speaking, because I'm not a great designer, but ClickFunnels makes it easy. But we had all the stuff, right? The testimony, the, all the good copywriting and all that. And we, I, from memory, don't, you know, take, don't hold me to this, but we would convert depending on the funnel. Cause it was in a lot of different acquisition funnels, anywhere from let's say eight to 12% if we were right. lucky. Okay. Um, not bad. And we still would have made money on it. But then I said, you know, one day, let me try it as the order bump. So I started doing that and we started getting 25% or more to take added on at the, on the, on the checkout page. So that was on a $1 trial. Then I had this idea, Hey, you know what? You know how I like at the store sometimes like grocery store or something, they'll be like, Hey, do you want to round up your order and buy, you know, whatever to the next nearest dollar and donate or whatever, yeah. you know, there's different oh, yeah. programs that do that. All of a sudden I was like, aha, maybe let's go and instead of, paying let's instead of selling the one-time thing for 7.99 or instead of selling it for seven bucks let's sell it for 6.99 or 2.99 or 9.99 oh, oh or i see what you're about to do here <laughs> and then now on the order bump it literally has a picture of like the membership thing with a penny on it this is my epic design skills and it says basically want to round up your order by just one penny to go ahead and get access to blah 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 blah, blah all these awesome things in our membership and we still had the fine print there. Hey, it's one, one penny for 10 days access on day 11. You're going to get charged $49. You can go in and cancel whenever you want. No contracts, all that stuff. Interesting. 30 yeah. to 40% on some of the funnels. Dude, that's, and, that's, uh, that language is so copy ninja. Cause like, it's like, yeah. you, cause you do think about that. Like, Hey, you just spent seven ninety seven. Do yeah. you want to, do you want to round up your order three pennies to save the starving puppies? You know, you get yes, that at yeah, the store, exactly. but like, it's the same thing. Like uh, on an acquisition funnel, like say it's a book funnel yeah. and you're doing free plus shipping, just freaking round it up a penny. I mean, and yeah. And, recurring. and then of course not to totally go off the deep end, but since I'm a total data geek, and if people are like, how did you set, how did you scale that thing to 10,000 members? Math, simple math, like, <laughs> right, yeah. you know, but like that literally was what we were able, that's literally how we were able to take a funnel that if our average, let's say that we're selling, um, I mean, our cost to acquire, we could be so upside down on average order value at the initial time of sale. You know, it could cost, we could spend $30 to get something, a customer on the, on day one. And the thing that they bought was seven dollars. Right? Like, How are you doing it? I'm like, well, because here's this other like five hundred thousand dollars MRR that's coming later on. That's exactly right. Uh, I was talking to uh, I had Robbie Baxter on my podcast on this podcast. She's the author of the Membership Economy. So she oh, wrote I the love that book. Yeah, that's dude, one you got to listen. That, yeah, dude, that episode is so gold. She just goes. She talks. She gives all sorts of things. But one of the things she said there was that uh, when she worked at Netflix that they were willing to give up like 40% of monthly lifetime value, like 30, it was like 30 to 40% just to get acquire a customer. So like, even though it was 10 bucks a month, they'd spend 50. They don't care. Cause they oh, knew yeah. once they got you, Oh yeah. You're they're going to make their money back 16 months later, whatever. And they'll keep you for 24 more. So you're yeah. good. Think about Amazon prime. Oh yeah. Just total tank. And then the beauty is, is, uh, you know, now you're so indoctrinated and sort of used to using their service. They can do whatever they want with the price and you ain't going to go anywhere. That's right. You're trapped. You're just, you're so, I, I can't, I, it's like Disney plus they got me. So I can't miss WandaVision next week. I can't miss one. <laughs> I wouldn't cancel that. You could, you could, you could hold a gun to my head and be like, I want to know what's happening to vision. Tell me what's well, going on. Right. Well, speaking of, you know, I mean this, I, I'm already loving this cause we're talking super high levels that can really change people's businesses. It's but, a different show, man. This is a different ep, kind of, yeah, kind but of talk about high level strategy. You look at Disney plus and what they've been doing. And I just did, they got me the same way with discovery plus channel partnerships with, with oh, yeah. a cell phone provider. So Verizon, yep. I was going to go and sign up for D Discovery Plus because all I wanted to do was watch the newest undercover billionaire, right? And I'm like, oh, it's on Discovery Plus. First of all, why why can't people add some originality? Does everything have to be plus? Well, anyways, yeah. you, you think after Google Plus, people would have shied away from that uh, a little bit because that didn't work, right? <laughs> but anyways, it's brilliant, you know? And it's like, so for everyone out there, like think about how you could potentially bundle your membership with via channel partnership with another sort of service where your customers already are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we got on Disney plus was sort of the free offer through being a Verizon customer. Yeah. 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 Any, anything you can do to piggyback something. And especially with ad game, the ad game is interesting because ads are weird because you, you want to be profitable early as possible. Right. 
but it takes a weird discipline on a membership to say, Oh, I got my $10 today. I'll get my 30 on month three. And then it's gravy, right? Cause mm-hmm. you gotta, it's like the model T you got to build the assembly line before the first car comes off. And that's a lot of investment, right? Yeah. But and, if you're selling yeah. something else and you're just rounding up your membership and then you pick up the back end. That's not that's not the same thing as selling off of the back end. Like you don't sell the course and then convince them to join your membership too. That's right. like the order bump is literally right there. Like they're checking out. Like you just sold them a book for 15 bucks, you're going to mail them and break even on the lead, but that one penny to round up is a uh, that's kind of gold. I think I might try some of that. Uh, yeah, it is gold because and I know it's gold cuz it's um a year ago I just got the Facebook memory. You know Kent Clothier? can't i don't think i know he's him. in the he's in the real estate space but uh he's he's one of the he's been a a killer of all business related things forever he's an awesome guy and and we met uh, a year ago out here in la jolla at his house and and he was picking my brain um for membership stuff and recurring revenue in general because he has a software and i told him that and uh it was funny a few months later in the war room our mastermind that we're in um i didn't attend the event it was a during the pandemic it was virtual Someone was texting me. He's like, man, Kent's, uh, Kent, Kent gave a, a, a whole presentation in there. And all he was doing was talking about you. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, <laughs> oh, he, he, his whole topic is about how he's skyrocketed his, his software. And he just kept saying, Cole Joseph, Cole Humphus gave me this order bump trick. And it's, Damn, I, it dude, I, I, listen, I have talked about Jermaine Griggs probably every week of my life since that conversation we had in That's passing so funny. at ClickFunnels. Yeah. Cause man, when you get something that works, and you, uh, when you get something that works and you adopt it and evolve it into your thing, and that's what's crazy about online business. Like it, there's so much happening scale wise and you're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When things hit, they hit. I mean, they just hit, right? And all of a sudden things blow up and it's like, yep, that one thing was all I needed to do, which is a huge argument out there for anyone listening to this to just throw some mud on the wall. Like if you hear an yeah. idea, don't think about it. Just try it and see if it works. Yeah, yeah, I think one of the reasons why so many people aren't nearly as successful as they could be is because they're paralyzed by their own, you know, actions of, and thinking literally of it may not work <laughs> or it Dude, might. The like, most dangerous words uh, an entrepreneur can say is, I wonder. Yeah. It's like, I wonder if it'll work. That's not, that's, that is the opposite. Like my wife said something this morning to me. She got onto me. We were talking about a strategy. And I did this. I, you know, it's, it creeps back in on you if you're not careful because oh, yeah. yeah. you get to a certain level and you're like, I want to go to the next level, but this level's good. I'll just, I'm not going to screw this level up to get to there. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, but I was, I said something. We had an idea this morning or she had an idea. I was like, ah, I just don't know if I want to do that. And she goes, Shane, normally she goes, she, she's like, she's like, the reason we're here is because we just do things and see if they work. And I'm like, yeah, yeah you're right. Let's go do that. Right. Yeah. So you got it. You got it. Would it, will it, would it, you start saying that stuff as an entrepreneur, y'all. Look in yeah. the wind mirror and say, "Stop it! Shut up! Go try it!" And well, see if certainly it works for one me. of certainly one of the secrets to my success has been l- just looking at data and math to guide the decisions. But the other thing is just what we're talking about, which is being so agile and scrappy and just literally, let's try it. Let's try it. Be and and it's sort of like fishing, you know. Go cast a lot of lines. Yeah, Ask you're gonna. You're gonna. Some days the boat will not be full of fish. In in fact, most days you're gonna get skunked. But one day you're going to clean house and same with online business, you know, like, you know, you have to take some chances. You have to throw some stuff around to see what sticks. You fish, you you like fishing. We just got off the water yesterday. What's that say? What's that? I can't see that logo. Uh, I'm reading it backwards. Fish market. I think it's a yellowfin tuna. I'm out here in San Diego. So we go out saltwater fishing. Grew up up freshwater, but now we're all. You need to come out here. I got a, uh, I've got a 40 acre property and i got a 10 acre lake private lake and yeah, uh go dude, bass we caught, fishing we, bro we caught a seven pound bass out of that thing last year you know what my biggest bass crazy. is crazy what's that 16 and a half where'd you get it at in san diego yeah we got i got three over 10 in the old days back when i was 12 to 15 it was all freshwater bass fishing we were in it big time if you ever really want to go if you're really into fishing i'll have to tell you offline go down to mexico yeah uh, oh yeah my i took got my dad spot. there a year a and a half ago. Yeah. Lake, uh, Picachos. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 757 fish in uh, three and a half days. <laughs> Great. Yeah. My, I like to call my, uh, we call our lake. It's like a, it's a, it's a, it's like, it's training wheels for my son because it's not real fishing. Cause I can, I can go c- pull crappie out of it every five minutes. Right. Correct. Because they're stupid. 
much. They don't know what they're doing. Right. Yeah. And, uh, but we've got a lake down here called a, uh, there's like two or three different lakes. There's Lake Cumberland and there's all sorts of lakes around here where smallmouth is just like the, like three of the world records have been pulled out sure. down in Tennessee. And dude, you can just kill that stuff. Up here, yeah. Man. Fishing's fun. Kill it. Yeah, yeah, it is fun. It is fun. I, I Get do you more, away from tech. I do a lot of fishing stuff. these days, you know, sold the company. People are like, what are you doing? I'm like going fishing, taking yeah, my man. dad out who just retired. Where are you from? San Diego. Oh, you're from San Diego. Okay. So t- let's, 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 let's use that as a good piggyback. Like, so tell me more about like the online business that blew up. Um, no, I'm, I hear more and more of these stories lately, since, especially since I've done this podcast of when, when pe- people don't realize what's possible with memberships, like you could say, I mean, all you need is a thousand people to pay $83 a month. That's a million dollars a year, people. But like, if you get a $49 a month membership to 2000, 5000, 10,000, these things just explode and, and, and can go out of nowhere. So tell me what got you into the online business space and how, and then tell me about the membership that you sold. And then I'd love to talk more about like the, the, we sold a membership too. So I'd like to talk more about that too. That's kind of a theme lately of selling memberships, but um, tell me, tell me the story that got you into the online world first and then. Uh, into yeah. membership. Well, ironically enough, I first <clears throat> heard about you and uh, Jocelyn from Pat Flynn's podcast, oh, which cool is how, which I also later on, I think after your episode, I was on a couple of times, but so it's sort of cool, full circle here, right? So literally you was working in corporate finance, driving to work, listening to Pat Flynn and uh, decided to start teaching photography, right? Started, started the whole blog, YouTube before going to work, writing tutorials, recording tutorials, all that good stuff. And, uh, I have to tell you because of how we are connected through Kirk. Um, I met Kirk at one of Pat and Chris Ducker's events in San Diego Um, business breakthrough. The one day business breakthrough. Yeah. Yep. I think it was the second one he did, but anyways, met Kirk there. And at that time, just for context, we were both, it's been fun with Kirk because we've kind of, our business have literally completely different businesses, but have grown kind of at the same exact stages at the same year. It was pretty cool. So at the time we were both at like 10 K a month. Um, and I remember, this is really cool. I remember finding my notebook from that day. And one of the questions I had was, was do Facebook ads work? (laughs) Because, (laughs) and you can't help but laugh because, you know, it was a legit question that I had and ultimately Facebook ads and funnels, sales funnels, and learning how to, you know, convert a customer, a stranger into a customer changed my life. Um, I was never, I never had any influence in the photo space. Nobody knew who I was. People still don't really know who I am, even in the online space, unless they were in our, my circle because I kept myself incognito. Mm. You know, in terms of how the business grew, Cole's Classroom, that's the name of it for anyone who wants to check it out, online photography education. Essentially, it was just organic. The first year was all organic. We made 135K just through the email list and all that stuff, selling courses, no membership, right? A couple of different, uh, one course and a couple of different like products. The next year, Learned, went to traffic and conversion conference, decided I was going to like dive full head, you know, dive in head first into Facebook ads. And then a couple months later, webinars took the business to 1.5 million, doubled it again the next year, still no membership. And at that time I felt a, I was burning myself and my team out doing all these launches on new products. Oh yeah. B I'm definitely burning out my list and C The price of advertising, the cost, I should say, had been going up enough where it was already, I was already starting to see the writing on the wall that my ROI is dropping and I need more LTV. I need more lifetime value. I need to go all in and create a membership. Although at the time it wasn't all in because most people who do memberships, they just think that everyone's going to flock to you because why wouldn't you want to pay this tiny price and stay forever? And I say that sarcastically because it's never that simple. There's so, a little, there's a little more to it in month two, three, four, five, six. You yeah. Keep them around, guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to earn the trust. Well, right. that's a perfect segue into what happened. So in 2016, I launched the membership, and I launched it, and we basically got to right short of a thousand members pretty fast. And at the time, we had two. We launched with two price points: 49 and a 19. The only difference was real. Mostly, the 49 got a community component. The 19 only got content. Okay. Um, so we, from an MRR standpoint, we were around 25 K a month. Now here's the thing at that time. And for the months to follow, 
we were at 25 K a month, kind of flatlined on the, on the membership, but the business itself was doing 250 K a month in total. So I say that to indicate we were basically this new thing. This membership was taking 80% of my time or more for about 10% of my revenue. And I was like, this ain't cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, like something that this isn't right. exactly what I expected. <laughs> that's, that's not a good mix. That, that doesn't look like work life balance. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really feeling that. And, but I was more mostly concerned with how can I acquire new customers? Cause it was, I was very quickly seeing that I just thought people were going to totally be all about this. And it's clear that they aren't like I expected. And, and I don't know if you've had these same realizations, but to me, especially when I work with any my consulting clients or whatever, it's like, I always say memberships are harder to sell than courses because they're inherently less specific. Like you need to get people, especially off an ad, to, you need to talk to that specific pain point yeah. that, or, or that desired end result. Especially and, a cold ad into a membership. Well, that's right. to yeah. me, it's like warm. Who cares about warm? We didn't have enough. The warm was too small to have a needle moving effect to really grow the business. So we were pretty much only focused on cold. If it didn't convert to cold, we were like, not worth our time. It sounds right. rash, but with our own 80, 20 efforts, we had to really think now, like that. Now I've, what I've heard, I just heard something interesting there. So what, what I'm here, okay, this might be a difference in perspective too. So like you kept yourself incognito ish. You were building like a brand, not coal in this, in this photo membership. Is that what I heard you say earlier? Like it was more like you were, you were selling the result of the thing. Basically you weren't selling like coal. Like for us, it's yeah, like weirder yeah, yeah. because like we're selling Shane and Jocelyn are leading you, yeah, right? Yeah, we're, like we're a, definitely, a, we're a Chris Ducker type brand. We're a youpreneur type, right. type brand. So yeah, it's no, like, it's I think that like that's, yeah, because a warm ad for us is like, oh, we just pull people in. But when I go cold, I got to tell them who I am, what I do, yeah. get their trust, all that stuff. It's not straight to result of the membership. Right. So that can be two differences there. You know? Yeah, for sure. And that's a good point. And like now with my new thing I'm doing, which is all about helping other people grow their online programs. There you that, go. That's gonna that's a higher price point that is, even though the name is not my personal name, right? It's absolutely like, why should you give me this much money a month? It's for me to the help story. you. The story. It's it's your it's because I have the wisdom and experience that got sure. me here and you need it. But right. Cole's classroom was, you know, it started off, it was, it's a great question. I want to acknowledge that. Cause it's like, a, if it was just me, how do you support 10,000 members? Like, so it was this evolution of, you know, membership grows, get more, what we would call mentors in the group, basically our coaches. Mm -hmm. Right. And we just hired from within the group. So the people that rose to the top that were just killing it, were like, Hey, um, we would love to make you a Cole's classroom pro mentor. You know, would is that something you're interested in? Uh-huh. You know? Great. Yeah, of course I would. <laughs> here's what it looks like, <laughs> yeah. you know, and here's how much you're going to get paid and here's what you need to do. Okay, great. So ultimately, yes, it was not about you join Cole's classroom because you're going to get help from Cole. It was, yes, here's all the stuff that you're going to get access to, think Netflix, and you're also going to get support yeah. from all of these professional photographers who are here to answer all of your questions. Did you pay those people? Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. But um, it was definitely a win-win. And, and I guess this is top of mind for me because in my, uh, my own group coaching program, literally somebody just asked me yesterday about how much I paid them. And what I, what I can share with you guys is, and anyone listening is a couple things. First and foremost, if you hire from within your community, they're going to be your best like advocates because they've already been with you a long time. They love you and you've already changed their life a little bit. Boom. Also, they are, they are going to be more interested in the status elevation they get than the paycheck they're going to get because mm -hmm. now they are suddenly labeled as an expert in so many words within all these other people. Now, we did pay them, but we don't just pay them a full-time salary. We'd look and say, and we sort of had two different tiers of people. We'd have almost like a community manager role, which their effort was literally simple. Go in there and every single day, spend on average two, three, four hours, depending on how many people you have, we would get a feel for how much time was needed. Hey, ghost, we want you to spend two hours a day, whenever the heck you want. Okay. And just go scan the group. And whenever you see a question that hasn't been answered, give them a link, a relevant link to the content that answers the question from our membership area. And we wanted to do that to enforce stickiness. 
you know, and, and honestly, that was hard because sometimes people are mobile. Sometimes they just answer them. It's all good, but you get the idea. It's the whole point was no member should go without having a question answered. Amen. Yeah. That's a, that's a big thing, Jocelyn. Cause like most people join a membership to feel like they are a part of the group and the community. 100%. It's not just to watch your fancy courses, people. I hate to tell you that out there. They come in first for that. And that's, that's it. That's it. That's it, man. So like when they, when you get them, as long as you, sometimes you don't even have to answer their question. It's just like, I hear you. I don't know the answer. Let's find it together. Yep. And just acknowledgement. That's it, man. So that was sort of the community manager role. And then we'd have a more form, like a next tier up of sort of mentorship, which essentially was, they also, they would do that, but they would also provide new content. And that's how I started really taking myself out of the equation of the business was I know I didn't have to create products. I didn't have to create trainings anymore because I had this whole team that was incentivized and paid to do it. And then for anyone who thinks like, man, maybe that's not enough money for whatever you decide that to be. Well, the best thing you can do is to go ahead and cut them a deal, a rev or a profit share deal on a new product launch. So we would literally say, Hey, now that you're a mentor, you have essentially unlocked, but I mean, we wouldn't, we don't have to like sell them. We're just like, Hey, if there's a product that you want to create, then we will launch it to our list. We'll do the whole spiel mm. and you get 50% of the launch proceeds for the first 30 days. Oh, wow. And then that, we so that gets them pumped up about making the content and putting it in the thing. Dude, we had yeah. people that literally put the payment, the the down payment for their for their first home from literally a product launch. Yeah, I mean, talk about life Incredible. changing. Oh yeah, yeah. You're so totally then, incentivized I, to do it then yeah. instead of sitting on your laurels. So it's sort of a triple whammy of like you as the as the owner scale yourself out of the business. You bring other people in, and then on top of that they have upside potential so they can see, wow, you know, I'm going to, uh, I love it. I'm going to, did keep you make them this. sign? Did you sign an agreement with those? Like, I know we had a, so we had a problem one time. Uh, so I have another website. It's called us history teachers. It's a membership for curriculum for school teachers. Mm. Um, but we had our first website that we hit, that we sold was called elementary librarian.com. The same thing. It was an education company and we created right. lesson plans for librarians. Right. So we had a content creator one time and I, I, I learned this very early that thought it was probably my fault, but it was, they thought that they were more like a partner because I was giving them percentages just to incentivize them to keep creating curriculum because creating an entire U S history curriculum is like 7 million words. It's like a full mm. textbook. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, but I made sure that we, we did at that point when I realized I had made a mistake and this person thought this and I saw there was ambiguity. I was right. like, Nope, we're signing a contract. I'm giving you a lump sum of money right now for everything you created. We're signing another contract. Everything you create for me belongs to me. When I decide to sell this thing, it belongs to me. Yeah. Um, you're going to get paid by the hour to create things or whatever the agreement is. So did you make them sign a contract? Like, Hey, you get X. Now we have consideration. I've given you money and this now belongs to me in my yeah, membership. For sure. Basically. Yeah. And, and, and you don't have to get too crazily formal as long as you have something, but really it's all about intellectual yeah, sign property. A piece of paper. It's all good. Yeah. Intellectual property, who owns it. And that all came extra, became extra important before I sold the business. But um, so anyways, now back to the sort of growth story, I guess, you know, we basically in 2017, I decided it was time to go all in on actually growing the membership. Um, Cause we essentially in 20 and, and that year, we basically migrated the 3 million of one-time sales from pretty much the previous year to 3 million in recurring. And that was kind of this Good. like offset, which is way harder than it sounds. And it was really just uncovering a few different tactical things to get acquisition coming in on autopilot for the membership. And then we grew it again. I'll, I'll, I'll quit saying numbers now, but we grew it more and we grew it a little more and then we sold the company. And by we, it was really just me, but um, the, the team, the business still exists. We sold it to a software company, not just the membership, the whole thing. And um, it's been awesome. And now, you know, it gets to live on. Like it's, it's sort of weird that it's like Cole's classroom, but I never wanted it to be just me. It just in, so happened that when we went to membership and I didn't expect it to grow like it did either, you know how that goes. So what was the first, I, I, this is a great, I love asking people this question because I remember the first month where we made more in a month than we made in a year at our jobs. Right. Yeah. Like, like 
what did that like like so that's that's forget the sale because that's an that's another emotion that's hard to explain because when yeah. you get that yeah. uh, that big lump sum you're like that's not real did somebody yeah. type something wrong in my bank account but like do you remember like that first month you're like holy crap this membership is recurring revenue more than my mom and dad made at their job or more than what like do you remember that and like what did that feel like when that happened i mean honestly i i i've had many different like moments like that but i don't necessarily think it was tied to the membership and the reason why is i never rested on my laurels on like okay we got this base now it's going to be here next month like because there's in in yeah. edu- and the thing is is with education membership it's so different than like software membership like software membership you could excuse my French, but if you have a good product, but like you could literally suck at marketing. And if yeah. it's a good product, you can be so upside. You can have your acquisition costs be, it could take, you can have a, a year to break even and you're still fine. Yeah. Right. Because well, well, they get their, te- and also those products that get their tentacles in your business. Like it's like, we just yeah. unwound from infusion soft. Yeah. It took us 18 oh, months. Same. Right. You Same. Know. We we went to. It took us forever to go from Infusionsoft to Active and move all of our subscriptions to yes. Stripe and all oh that. Oh my gosh! Nightmare. So you know, education churn is 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 a, is a real problem. I mean, it's hard. But anyways, no. I mean, I think some of the milestone moments. I mean, that that going from the 135k in year one to 1.5 million. When I I remember hitting the first 100k milestone in a month, and that was we were still just slinging products. It, no membership even existed then. That was a big one. That was when I was like, holy, you know. That, that's when you realize right. what's possible. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's, it's whatever you put on paper. That's what's possible. But then it's kind of like, I just became this like, I guess, rabid dog of like just wanting more. And just, it wasn't that I needed more. It was more of just the like, it's just the game and the challenge of mm-hmm. like more impact, more growth, more, more puzzles to solve. Every single day, it's a new challenge. And you know, I will say when we got to the biggest milestone that we got was 400 K MRR. And that was, uh, that deserved a nice McAllen, uh, single malt that I went out and bought. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. <laughs> and I know that cause I Go took a picture, uh, you know, of this and it wasn't even that crazy expensive. It was expensive, $250 bottle, you know? And I like, and I had to take a picture of it and commemorize and that was it. And like, I have just, I'm a simple guy. Like I, even when after I sold the company, like I never did anything. And I'm not saying that like for pity It's just like, I don't need, I got everything I need. Well, you know what we did? We went out to my favorite yeah. Mexican food lunch with my wife and my, my little girl, Lacey. And after that, here's most people don't know the story. Like it's nothing revolutionary after it's in sort of this like mall area. We walked to, um, we were just walking, looking at the little fish pond and across the, across the way, my wife saw this uh, company. I never knew what, what the heck the company did, but it's a company called Madewell. And apparently it's like jeans and like premium jeans or clothing, whatever. She's like, hey, let's go over there. I'm like, let's go. And we walked in there, you know, and I think she told me, she's like, yeah, one day I want to get a pair of jeans here, but they're like 125 bucks or something. I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's, let's Today go. Today is <laughs> that day, my dear. So Today walked, is that day. We walked in there and little Lacey was as cute as ever. That's my little girl, one of my little girls. And she is running around and, and Nicole was trying on a few different jeans. And she's like, what do you think about these? I'm like, get as many as you want. <laughs> and, <laughs> I want uh, all of them. That rack, just give me yeah. that rack. I'll give and them she, out on the way. No home. joke. She picked out one. I'm like, you only want one. So she picked out one nice pair of jeans. And um, when I was in that store, the wire came through with the money. Mm. Cause I knew it was, I knew it was coming that day. I didn't know when I kept refreshing, refreshing and I refreshed it. And that was a pretty cool moment where I'm like, Oh, <laughs> Oh, That's dang. Amazing. It does yeah. look funny. And it was and multiple went, seven figures, got, right? Uh, it was I multiple got... seven figures, wasn't it? Go ahead. Sale. It was multiple seven figures, right? Like it was a huge, because 400 MRR is like, I mean, even a two to three times multiple is insane, you know, for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was an eight figure exit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing, dude. That's yeah, yeah. Cool. Congratulations. Um, That's awesome. And it, and, and it was a mix. It, it wasn't all lump sum. It was a mix. Um, there wasn't an earn out, but sure. there's, there's equity involved on the, you know, the whole spiel. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was good. Like, and part of the reason why I just started a new company is literally to help other people see what's possible. Because you and I both mm-hmm. know, like, like, I never in a million years would have imagined that that would happen one day. Like, I never... I never thought I'd see a hundred thousand dollar a month one day. In fact, since we both came from listening to Pat Flynn, 
I re literally remember working in my corporate finance job and telling one of my coworkers, because he was sort of my sounding board with all this online stuff when I first started. I remember showing him and telling him about Pat Flynn's income reports that at the time were like 75 or 80K a month. I remember saying, man, if I could just get a, like a quarter of that, how amazing would <laughs> yeah. that be? Yeah. 10%. I'd take 10, 10%. Yeah. Give me 10% right. of could, that. Right? Could you imagine if I can get 25K a month? So, you know, and, and just to also piggyback, since we just talked about kind of drop the nugget on like a, a successful exit, which it's it sort of, in, in some ways can be weird to talk about, but I, it, it's also a good reminder of how powerful it is to once again, not be afraid of putting yourself out there. And here's what I mean by that. Well, first and foremost, the obvious is, is when you scale something that fast, uh, relatively fast, you're going to have plenty of internet trolls, right? There's going to be people that are trying to knock you down and I have my share. So first and foremost, you got to be okay and ready for that. And just like, keep focused on helping your people. Number two, though, I don't, I think the sale still would have happened because I understand the mechanics of how we fit into their puzzle. Um, but the cool thing about it is, is the actual conversation started because I reached out to the software company to try and invest in their company and help grow them. <laughs> That's interesting. So it was only three interviews later of us, me and the founder talking that finally the tables turned and he's like, you know what? Um, we got something to share. We actually already just raised a ton of money to this private equity group to help our growth. And we would actually be interested in acquiring you. Dude, but, but you, you're making it sound like an accident, but like, like all oh, this just happened. Listen, I, I say this is a quote. I say this all the time. Every good thing I've ever right. gotten in online business is because I put myself in the right in place position. to be at the you, right place at the right time. And that's what you life. did. You're just make, you're just stirring the waters, man, making something happen. You didn't know what the outcome was going to be. It's like fishing, right? right? Yeah. Stir the water up a little bit. You don't know what's down there. You know? oh, yeah. And that's, that's why you had the opportunity though. But that's you know? also, and especially now with my new, the thing I'm working on where it's like, it's higher ticket. So it's like, it's forced me to have awesome conversations with awesome people. And I'm time and time. And by conversations, I mean, like get away from the computer and just pick up the phone. You know what I mean? <laughs> Word, or get yeah. on a face-to-face -face meeting like this. And it's just such a reminder. And I, I, I hope people really listen and take this to heart. And I'm sure you would agree. It's such a reminder that we all need to quit thinking about pass and chase the passive income and start chasing the like, relational income because the oh, power, dude. Yeah, you, the power of relationships is just huge. Like yesterday, I, here's a great example. Yesterday I, and I don't know if anything will come of it, but the other day I talked about like, Hey, who has a Facebook group with coaches, consultants, course creators, you know, let's talk in a pretty high level, um, online marketing expert skill guy wrote me, we've been friends. We never formally have talked on the phone or anything wrote me. He's like, Hey, let's chat. So anyways, I was fishing. I was like, Hey, I'll talk to you tomorrow. And then that turned into like, Hey, let's just jump on the phone right now. You know, and he has this like epic, you know, super high ticket vision and he's investing in companies and also has this other great membership he's launching. And he's like, what are you up to now? And I'm like, well, I got this rapid scale system. It's sort of a mid ticket program and his group coaching blah, blah, blah. And he's like, great. I'm not, I got this great group that has like 10,000 people in it who are your exact people. And I'm not really monetizing them. And I think you can help me with this membership thing. You know, so we don't know what's going to come of it yet, but we already have another meeting scheduled. And I guess the point and is- And it's all because of putting it out there. Just pick up the there. phone, make your own back. luck. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah, man. cool. Dude, let me go back. I'm going to rewind a little bit here. So like, I, we, we, I, I feel lucky. I hear this a lot. Like people who scale with courses and coaching and things like that, there's a very common thread of getting burnt out or acquisition gets weird or, yeah. you know, it's like the, the roller coaster that we all ride where it's like, well, I really don't know what I'm doing. And this is the last month, uh, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, yeah, life months, is right? over. <laughs> life is over. But like Joss and I were lucky. I, I would say this is a place where we were lucky. We stumbled into the membership model. So like we, we basically Jocelyn put it out there to her. She built this list and she was like, Hey, if you want this, I will create it for August. People mm -hmm. wanted it and they bought it. Then someone, then we did the same thing in September. If you want September, we'll make September. If you want August or October. And like all of a sudden we looked up and we're like, why would we not just build them once and keep their money yeah. every month? 
Yeah. You yeah. know, we just, so like I never went through the high ticket coaching lane. Right. Sure. Yeah. And I kept, and I kept hearing people say that like, man, I'm getting burnt out launch to launch launches are stressful. Launches are scary. Uh, I talked to Amy Porterfield a couple of weeks ago and she was saying that, dude, she was saying the exact same thing. Like the, she didn't like the stability of her income living launch to launch. Yeah. Right. And, um, they know these are it's, it's, it's as big as it gets. And I was like, I, I always find that fascinating that people realize eventually, man, what if it's not that we don't want to work for it? Like I'm a, I am a, a fighter of the passive income myth. I, mm -hmm. someone asked me that today on a call. I was like, dude, it's not passive. There's no such no. thing as an evergreen ad. I don't know who's telling you this crap, but you got to stop thinking that way. But there is stability. There is, mm -hmm. I know my LTV. I know how many months people stay. I can predict to you within probably a few thousand dollars, how much money we're going to make six months from now. Right. With the membership model. Right. Yeah. So as you saw that lift of the Oh, it's getting closer. The membership's getting closer to this. Then the membership flips. I guess my question would be one, did you feel that stress go away from the higher ticket stuff? And not, not that stress goes away, but you felt that more stability, that more evenness of, all right, this is monthly recurring revenue. This is what, how we know, we know how long people are going to stay. We can do future income reports. We can see this. And then also too, do you, do you think you would have gotten anywhere near that kind of exit without the monthly recurring? Because when we sold our business, I, I learned this lesson about selling a business. They love monthly recurring revenue. That's what they're looking for. How, mu how much is systemized and how much is monthly recurring and is your acquisition in place? If that's true, it seems like the acquisition is higher. So how did, how did you feel as it got more stable and you were like, wow, this is pretty cool. And then yeah. did, you, did you find that in this conversation that they loved you because of the recurring revenue? Great question. So, I mean, we never sold anything high ticket. I do now on my own coaching and consulting. Well, let me, but, let me change it. One off sales versus recurring. Right. So let's right. say that instead of high ticket. Yeah. 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 I mean, yes. With a big caveat, you know, I think stability, there's always going to be some level of stability once you have some MRR base, right? Like it's not going to go away in two months, like to zero, mm -hmm. right? Like even if your turn is totally horrible. It's not going to go from, yeah, yeah, it's not going to go from hundred K to zero overnight, but you can erode it plenty fast. And I think the biggest distinction is for anyone who has a membership is to really, I think the big variable though, is where the acquisition came from. Cause if it came from warm channels, you know, I, I have plenty of people. I was just talking to Rachel Miller, Miller for example, she's in my, my program and you know, she is an expert with organic and she is, has a membership and she's like, Cole, like we have great retention. Our people stay 14 months. I'm like, that's cool. But none of those people are from ads that didn't know you. So like mm -hmm. it's the, you know, if they already have this super no like trust factor and you've had people forever, I mean, Cole's classroom has still some of the people from 2016, a mm -hmm. good number of them. So they've been with us now for five years, <clears throat> but those aren't the people that got us to 400 KMRR. It was the cold traffic people that didn't know us that gave us a chance. And inherently that meant that they are, they churn at a significantly higher rate too. Yeah. For sure. Right. Um, so yes, especially early on, I guess my caveat is, is like, I think part of the confidence boost and sort of the um, stability isn't just within the numbers, but it's within the knowledge of knowing the metrics that you can rely on. It's the knowing that you've had so much volume that, you know, my people churn on month one at X percent and on month two, they're at here. And it's more than just straight line churn. I'm getting into the weeds, but you know, is there's usually this bell curve. And once you get past day 90, it mellows out. So having the data is, is the number one thing that's going to give any entrepreneur more confidence in how to navigate that landscape. So that's what would give you the, that's a, that's a really great way to say that. Now that I think about how I think about my business, that I think that's true for me too. Like it's the, it's the knowledge and the, and the mind on your money and the mind on the metrics and yeah. paying attention that gives you that peace. So basically the, the membership itself gives you runway. So like, Oh, yeah. I don't have to worry about next th Saturday's launch. I can at least right. worry about three months or six months. And then yeah. knowing your numbers gives you that piece where you can go to your kid's ball game and pay attention because exactly. you don't have to worry about your business that day. Because then once again, yeah. how did I grow the company? Math. So like if I know my LTV is $300 and I can just tell you back in 2017 when ad costs were cheaper, 
our acquisition, if we were getting members for 80 bucks, game on, baby. Mm-hmm. Like all day long, let me go and spend another thousand a day, another thousand a day on ads. And just, let's just freaking start crushing it. And trust me, that's what we did. But the problem is, is that stability can erode as soon as your acquisition costs start catching up to your LTV. So right. that's where we're at today. And I, the reason I'm saying this out of experience is it's not 2017 anymore. It's not 2016. So if now I have the same metrics, $300, they stay on average, they're worth 300 bucks, whatever. But then now, because Facebook ads have gone up 25% a year for the last four years or whatever, and now instead of $80 to get a customer, maybe it's maybe it's costing me 225 And now instead of a, I mean, I'm going on a tangent here, but instead of a 60 or 90 day break even point, now I'm at month six. Well, geez, now I'm no longer as confident. Now I'm having right. to go back to the drawing board, scrap and try and make some tweaks. And we've done, we've been there and done that. And, you know, the next question about does MRR make, make the acquisitions a better exit? I mean, I learned a really big lesson and this is probably going to be surprising to many people and very inspiring and eye opening to others. Um, and part of the reason why I am not a gung ho membership only membership kind of guy, even though that was such a huge component of my business. Members, MRR in so many words is not treated as MRR if your retention sucks. Okay. So let, 100%. Me, say that. let me say that. Differently. What would you say? What would you, what would you say is sucky retention? Like two months, three months? No, I mean, we Four, had, maybe. I think it depends too. So like we were being acquired by a, a, a group that invests in software companies. So comparing education average or even good retention compared. Oh to yeah. Software. Right. Yeah. It'd be like, it'd be like comparing click funnels to uh, Ex- content-based exactly. leadership. So, membership. You can't so I was up against yeah. that. I'm like, dude, we should get a better multiple because we should be worth this because we got all this MRR. And they're like, finally, they're like, Cole, here's the deal. You know, we don't view that revenue as true MRR. We know it is, but it's not because you're losing your people yeah. every six months. And I'm yeah. like, <clears throat> Dang it. Good I mean, point. I, I mean, I get <laughs> Touché. it. Yeah. <laughs> right. But so I would pose this um, two things. Number one, I mean, especially if you're on the chemo zone for three months, then you're probably better. I can almost guarantee that you'd be better off to sell a higher price one time product because you're yeah. essentially having people that are giving you a three pay. Or, no. or, you're, or you're only focusing on sales and you need to get your butt in there and get retention up to nine months. As fast 100%. As but basically. the problem with retention on education is. Trust me, like I said, I love the membership economy and I've read so many books and I literally um, devoted all my energy on retention for like over a year. And there's only so far you could take it with education. And the reason why is not to be a bearer of bad news. And this is just me on my soapbox, but I've had plenty of data points and people to try is you, it's hard to control somebody's actions. You can put it all right in front of them. You can give them the most yep. frictionless experience. You can give them the most segmented help. We even had a concierge service that literally gave a one-on-one email to every trial that came in that literally said, Hey, Shane, it looks like since you indicated on your onboard in the first 30 days, you want to learn this, here's the best resources we have for you. Go here, here, here. It's still on them to go and actually log in and go and actually try and learn something. And learning stuff is hard. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But we, we even had to do like what we learned from it was easy for us in education, like education, like selling lesson plans. Right. Because that's plug and play. You at plug and play. You're getting what you need that day. It's like a it's like a bookshelf and you want to go get that book today. You're it's talking, right. So it's, it's just, just like Kirk's business. It's just like Kirk's exactly. Business. Same thing. Yep. Yep. And then what we learned from Flip Lifestyle was an eye opener because we realized, oh, yeah, I can teach you how to do all this stuff. But yeah. you might use it, you might not. And then there's another yeah. point where you're going to get your result and you're done. Right. So we right. had to add things to the end of our membership to like take those 20, 30 percent of people that love you and give them a reason to keep paying you forever, which right. is why we're uh, we're, at, we're right now. We, so one thing is marketing. Like if you can teach people marketing, they just if you can give them an idea every month, they're going to do it if you make them money. And then the, uh, the other thing we've learned a lot is accountability. Like if you can connect them to each other in the community and create a mechanism 
where the only way they get that result, that accountability, and they have friends, and the only way those friends are available to them are through your community. It's kind of like the war room, really. It's like they're going to stay in because there's so much benefit of staying in after that point. But just courses by themselves will never do it. It'll never keep them. There's the three prong approach that I say people come in for the content, they stay for the community. Yep. To a point, and that's my disclaimer. They'll stay to the community for it, might buy you a few months, depending on your price point, whatever. They ultimately have to get results. And, um, and that, of course, takes work for most people. Yeah. You have a brilliant thing with the whole lesson plan thing because anything that's plug and play, it's great. Yeah. Heck yeah. Dude, we, we, we gr- listen to this. This will blow your mind. I thought that we were going, I thought my education company, the, what we, the, is the history stuff, I thought it was going out of business in March last year. Cause they closed all the schools. I was like, this is stupid. Every, every you know how you say like, ah, everybody's not going to quit next month. No, that was a moment where I looked up yeah. and went, I think everybody's going to quit next month because they're not working anymore. Right, right? right. It was crazy that I, so what I did was I just said, Hey, well, we've changed our terms and conditions. You can put our stuff in Google classroom now. In and Google classroom. Oh yeah. Cause cause all the virtual school went online to Google classroom, Google classroom right. is in 80 million kids. There you go. Now or whatever. Yeah. And like, so, but our terms of systems, our terms and conditions said that you couldn't put our stuff in online databases. Cause mm-hmm. of course, just to protect the IP. Yeah. So like I immediately was like, this is the fix and we'll deal with the aftermath down the road. But once we allowed people to do that, of course, 80% of them didn't upload our crap in there. Right. Mm-hmm. And they, but, but it gave them a good reason to stay. And we grew the, the, the education thing. Yeah. Even though nobody was actually in the classroom, it was That's bizarre. So funny. But like, it's just little things like that, though. Like, go to show you, like, like if if you can create that, forget education. Oh, Shane, that's easy. You got teachers; they have to go to work. Bull crap. Every niche probably has something that's plug and play. Yeah, and it gives you a way to keep your lifetime value growing, basically. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the name of the game, isn't it? Yeah, man. So tell me this. Uh, this is awesome, dude. I got a feeling. This could go on for a long time. We're, yeah. trade, we're, we're, we're at the trade notes part of the show at this point. Actually, I think that was the whole hour that we've been talking. Yeah. But um, so so you you sold your business. I think our stories are very similar because we we built something that we thought was cool because it sounded like a good idea. It could give us some freedom. It could give us some time. We could work for ourselves. Then all of a sudden it blows up and we're like, wow, could mm-hmm. I blow it up more? So we start right. throwing TNT sticks at it. Right. Yeah. Then it does. And then you sell it. And it's this life changing amount of money. And all of a sudden you're sitting there. You ain't got a mortgage. You don't have to worry about cars. You ain't got, you know, all these things yep. are there. Yeah. Um, so basically, why did what's next? Tell everybody, tell me what's next. First of all, like, what are you doing now? Why did you why did you get back off and get back in the game? Um, yeah. And like, what are you building now on, on the next step? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I've learned so much about myself and since the acquisition, as I'm sure anyone who sold their company has, you know, so I had been working with the company that acquired us, helping grow the portfolio of brands. And, um, ultimately in so many words, you know, it's, um, that was like going back to corporate America. Right. I mean, my, my calendar was filled up, went from me controlling my calendar to now having all these meetings. And instead of me waking up in the morning, energized with ideas that I can implement in the business today, they had, we had to meet and lobby for these ideas and watch them get prioritized and deprioritized. And in so many words, um, I went from being, you know, I traded that sort of super um, high speed, high agility, small and scrappy team to part of a really big organization. Mm. with 80 people and yeah. inherently it's it's not the fault of anyone but inherently when you have 80 people on a team and you got so many different layers and so many different decisions you go way slower so um i have since decided to get back to doing what i enjoy you know and it sort of like takes a while to figure out like okay if and i actually talked to the ceo about this of the company when i when we had the conversation that i was going to say goodbye and and step down and let them keep doing their thing because it's in the best interest of the company that I, you guys go find somebody else because I got to go work on some other stuff. And side note, I had my second um, baby girl three months ago. So literally <laughs> no joke, it. no joke it. <laughs> life. It, my personal life is out of control from a, like, you know, just a chaotic standpoint. That being said, um, 
the biggest thing that I've learned since selling my company is it's so easy for many of us entrepreneurs to underestimate the value that we get. I'm not talking money, the value that we get on just freedom, but more important than freedom, the challenge and the, the brain, you know, what, what, what happens to your brain when you're energized to go and solve problems that when you go back and start working for somebody and you're just sitting on meetings that, you know, you shouldn't be there for, or you're, you're sitting on meetings that you're missing the moments with your kids, all of those things. And you're just like, this is driving me crazy. So for mm -hmm. me, the reason why I started um, the rapid scale system is I kind of got back to the basics of like, what fires me up? You know, what is it that I loved about Cole's classroom? What is it that I can do? And ultimately, Shane, I kind of realized that it's, it's taken a while, but I realized that what I had accomplished was quite different and unique than most people get to experience. And the reason why I was able to sell the company was because I did things a certain way. I didn't just rely on warm and I, I was able to structure the team in a way that we, we grew revenue, but we also were skyrocketing profits because we were highly leveraged on operations. And I wasn't part of the sales equation. Everyone, all the naysayers who were like, oh, literally I remember people saying, well, Cole could never sell his company because it has his name in it. Check, did that. So, <laughs> right, you exactly. Know, yeah, you that's know, not true. For me now, my main, I'm getting back to my purpose. And my purpose is like, and it's realizing also that Cole's classroom was just a stepping stone. That was just the initial door to do what I'm meant to do, which is help people now take their course, take their program, take their consulting, whatever, and essentially realize that they don't have to rely on just hustling social media to get to a certain point. And then that's all all there is to it. Like, a, they're going to burn out. They're going to burn their existing people out. They're never going to be able to sell the company. And there's just a better way of doing it. So yeah. the rapid scale system is all about basically how to create a business that is, um, gives you control over the growth, right? It gives you levers to actually pull um, and sort of lets you take back time so that you don't have social media and the business running your life, but you're actually able to operate as a business owner rather than just have a glorified job. Yeah, man, uh, dude, I, I love, I love it's, it's hard. It's a weird thing. We hear about people selling businesses and online businesses and stuff like that, but it's, I, I love to sit down with people who've done it because I know that like a lot of people that listen to this show or on my other podcast or whatever, you know, like they, they're inspired by that story of, wow, you right. built a sellable asset and it changed your life. And it, did all those things that you wanted to do, but like, it's a, it, uh, you said something profound there. And I just want to make sure nobody missed it. I learned a lot about myself after I sold the business and until you're in that position, you really like, you can plan for it. You can put your exit on paper and all those yeah. things. But when it happens, things change. Like I remember Jocelyn, the people who we sold it to, um, and I'm out of the, uh, talk, uh, the, I'm out of the non-disclosure period now, so I can talk about this, <laughs> but like yeah. the, the people we, we thought that the owner of the company who bought our business was really cool, but the person who managed the transitions turned out not to be as cool as we thought they were. Yeah. This was a horrific thing for us because we sold our baby to somebody who was just like, I'm going to milk this dry, yeah. do this, do that. Jocelyn really felt like she was in a job again. Mm -hmm. Um, even though we had this other thing, dude, it, dude, it caused like, we're sitting here on sitting on this amount of money that no one in our family had ever dreamed of making. And I'm like, we're depressed a little bit. Same. I mean, it, it's cool. Yeah. But yeah. then, but then you have that, like, well, what's next? Like, okay, fine. Was that the, really the finish line? I remember when we paid off our house, I, I always tell the story. Cause it was like, I walked in and I thought, this is it everybody's goal is to pay off their house. And yeah. most people do it when they're 60 or 70. By God, I'm 37 years old and I'm writing the check. I'm walking. I walked in, I handed them the check. She handed me a receipt and said, word for word went next. Oh, <laughs> and I was like, that's it. I was like, where's the confetti? Where's the part? But then you get back in the car at that point and you're like, all right, I think that the finish line was not what we thought, what we yeah. figured out. You got to go back and soul search and figure well, that out. Man. You know, the best way, I mean, it's, it's, I'm, it sounds so cliche to say like, I'm not doing this new thing for money. Mm. I'm not, you don't need right? it. I'm you not don't need back that. to work, but it, but it, it's proved and, and you've been there too. It's like, I literally in the past 12 months have probably been my most unhappy and I'm not like a sad kind of dude, 
but I've been pretty dang down in the dumps. Yeah, man. And, and it's like when you, and then you realize that it's like, it's funny because you, you end up getting into business for financial freedom, more money, financial freedom. There's other stuff, but let's be real. We all need to make money at some point, right? Yep. So you start making money and then you want to make more because that just happens when you bring more value to the, the, the market and all that. And then you get to a point that you don't need more. Okay. Whether it's a life changing amount in the bank or just like it's coming in every month. You've got your lifestyle where you need it to be. In your yeah, pool. You're good. You can cruise control it and you're fine. Now, if you're lucky enough to sell your business and have enough that you literally have the choice that you don't have to work anymore, that's a whole nother ballgame. But in both cases, it's like full circle because it, it doesn't, it's not about the money. It's a mm -hmm. matter of what doing things that really you enjoy doing. And the reason why I'm pumped to be on this podcast because if you can't tell, I enjoy talking about this stuff. Yeah, I'm man. not getting paid for this. This is just us doing things that we enjoy doing. See, you ruined it. I, everybody thought I paid my guests. That's how you got on here, man. So now you've ruined well, my. You've ruined you might my, have to my... pay the membership economy, gal. But you know, <laughs> no, I didn't have to pay her either. I got, I got, I got in with that one. I'm, so I'm I guess pretty, I'm pretty sneaky. You know, the lesson learned here for anyone listening though is like, you know, do your best that you can to really dig in deep on what is it that makes you fired up. You know, yeah. and, 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 and that goes for even the stuff you're doing. A lot of the people we're helping in the rapid scale system, it's because they don't want to be tethered to social media and Instagram stories all day long. And guess what? You shouldn't. I think that's yeah. sort of a crappy way to live your life, Yeah. but they don't know of any other way. So you need to take inventory of, you know, and one of the things I discussed is the role finder matrix, which is like, how do you get yourself out of the business? And part of it's just figuring out and plotting down Here's stuff I'm good at. Here's what I'm not good at. Here's what I enjoy. Here's what I don't enjoy. And get rid of all the crap that you don't, that you aren't excited about. And remember, someone else is very excited about the crap you're not excited about. And you exactly. just got to go find that person to do it for you. And you're yep. good. You know, I, 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 there's one more story I'll tell you real quick. I know we got to wrap it up here and I want to make sure everybody, you tell everybody like where they can find you online. But the, uh, what, what the coolest thing was though, like, and I, I think this is, you know, when you look at the hero's journey, which we're all obsessed with and everybody's storytelling these days and Russell Brunson's got his epiphany bridges and all these things, everybody focuses on the moment in their story where they triumphed, where they made it to the top of the mountain, right? Like I, like when I quit my job and that's what you're selling sure. or when I discovered how to do the photography in a certain way or whatever. Um, but if people, if they keep reading the hero's journey, it always ends with purpose, bringing the torch back down from the mountain. And as we, and, but the problem is we're not taught that growing up. So when we sell the business or when we pay off the house or when we do that, it's a letdown. And, and then you remember, wait a minute, I can go out and help people with my God-given experience and wisdom. And that's what you do at the next level. That's, and I, I think that's why I'm so drawn to the membership model. It's awesome to talk about $400 a month and thousand dollars a month and all this but really i love the impact i love that i can go one to the masses right like and you can really have a lot of impact out there in the world and when you get to a higher level of business i don't care if you're selling coaches or whatever it's all about impact and i i'm really happy man i'm happy for you because like you know we sold our business i think a little bit before you sold your business and i've I've seen the year after, like the year you just said, yeah. I've seen that. And I, and I know how fulfilling the year after that is when yeah. you're doing what you're meant to be here on the earth to do, man. And I really feel like you're like on that path and it's going to be amazing. So tell everybody a little bit about what you're building and uh, where they can find you and connect with you online, Cole. Yeah, Shane. Well, this has been awesome. And real quick, I want to just acknowledge the impact because um, one, you know, there was times when I was maybe naysaying uh, membership stuff and and I, and what I, what I want everyone to realize though, is the fact that the level of impact that our community got when they're a member versus otherwise is tremendous, you know, and, th and that was important to me back then. I didn't want to just sell the quick fix. I wanted to get people in there that had real results and memberships are great for that. And the friendships that people have made in there is even more tremendous. Um, in terms of what I'm doing now, I mean, rapidscalesystem.com will get you to um, my sort of, I guess, signature program. And that is really all about, um, you know, focusing on how to build a business that basically runs on autopilot. And there's obviously different levels of autopilot, but, you know, getting away from relying on organic, getting away from having to hustle on social media and really have a business that is built upon a, uh, a proper foundation that 
it can go, it can actually bring you customers around the clock um, while still being immune to ad cost increases. And that's what I'm passionate about right now because you may be listening to me like, I've tried ads before and it didn't work. Well, the ads weren't the problem. It was the, it was the business model and the way that your sort of assets are structured, which is the issue. And that's what I'm helping people do now. So for anyone who's selling something online, as long as it's not e-commerce and, or an agency, if you're selling courses, programs, whatever, and you want my help, rapidscalesystem.com is where to go. Um, and I'd love to chat with you. I'm, I'm, I'm in the period of my life now where I just like meeting people. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> you know, it's like, I just love talking to people. So if uh, you just want to say hello, you can email me at Cole at um, ColeHumphus.com. And I'll make sure that Shane, you put that website. That's my personal website as well. Um, ColeHumphus.com. Awesome, but, man. Well, listen, I appreciate you, man. I love your story. I know some people are inspired out there here. Man, a membership got eight figures. I'm going into this. And yeah. they even got a little wisdom on what to do after it happens, man. So thanks for your time, buddy. I appreciate you. Good to meet, good to meet you and finally hang out in person too. I know. We'll do it again, Shane. Thanks for having me, buddy. All right, guys, that wraps up my interview with Cole Humphus. Man, what a great guy. I had such a fun time talking to Cole today. I learned a little bit. Heck, I learned a lot, and I'm sure that you learned a lot too. Make sure you check out Cole online. He's a great guy, and I really, really think, I mean, he knows what he's talking about. You don't grow a business to $400,000 a month in monthly recurring revenue on $49 a month memberships, unless you know what you're doing, man. So make sure you paid attention to everything that he said. Today. And listen, we would love to help you scale and grow your online membership as well. You know, when Jocelyn and I sold our business, we did it so that we could dedicate our lives to helping other families do what we did. Start an online business, launch a membership, grow it to a place where it can replace your income, go full time, become self-employed, become location independent and change your family's future. That's why we do the Flipped Lifestyle Podcast. That's why I do the Membership Masters Podcast. Our mission is to help 100,000 families start, build, and grow membership sites of their own. We would love for you to be a part of our online community. We've got tons of great resources that will help you start a successful membership site over at FlippedLifestyle.com. We've got the Flip Lifestyle community, hundreds of family-focused entrepreneurs from around the world that are working on growing their businesses together. We've got the Flip Lifestyle Blueprint, the exact plan that we used to grow and scale and sell our online membership site and launch all of the companies that we have today. And we've also got the Membership Masters newsletter. That's a monthly newsletter that I mail out every single month that tells you exactly what to do every single day to get more members. You can find all the information about our program over at flippedlifestyle.com slash free. That's F-L-I-P-P-E-D lifestyle.com slash free. You can try our entire program for free right now. Who knows? Maybe someday you will be a guest right here on Membership Masters because you built a successful membership site inside the Flip Lifestyle community. All right, guys, that is all the time that I have for this week. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Make sure you go leave us a five-star review and share this episode on social media with some of your friends. Until next time, get out there and do what membership masters do. Be consistent, be prolific, be relentless, and do whatever it takes to flip your life. We'll see you then.